Okay, so welcome everybody to tonight's webinar. Uh, hopefully you can all see that front screen there where tonight we're talking about building your customer base. Uh, and this is one of a series of uh, eight webinars that I run. So I try and run one every Wednesday night, the odd one I might miss if I'm away at a meeting or, or on holiday or anything. So it might take nine weeks or so to go through the whole lot. Um, the first three there, one, two, and three, are really about the retail side of the business. Four and five are about sharing the opportunity and building up your residual income. And six, seven, and eight are, I suppose you'd call them the personal development side. One, two, and three, and four and five are just the skills that you need to learn in order to build a massive business. Six, seven, and eight are, once you've learned those skills, what is it that motivates you and drives you to, to overcome any obstacles that, um, that would stop you from building a, a massive and successful business? So those are the eight that we do. Tonight I'm talking specifically about building your customer base. These are all recorded. So um, at the end of this uh, webinar, I'll show you where the recordings are. So if you, uh, if you don't know, and, and, but then if you wanted to go straight to, say, personal development or go back to getting started, you don't have to wait kind of five, six, seven weeks. You can just go to the recordings. So tonight, building your customer base. We're going to be covering a number of things. So basically, what is a customer base? If you're new in the business, it, you might not know what we're talking about. Um, a little bit about why customers order from you in the first place. Then a bit about bonding with your customers. And, and I'll explain what I mean by that. And it's, it's, kind of, it's just what you'd expect, really. Um, and the result of that is a base of customers who are loyal to you, who will order from you again and again and again. So quick question, a little bit of feedback from every, everybody. Could you give me an idea? And obviously some of you who might maybe only been in the business for you know, a few days might not have any customers yet. But um, how many customers do you have? Um, and on if you're just doing catalogs, then that should be fairly easy for you to, to, to work out or to know. And on Facebook, obviously, it's, sometimes it's a little bit harder to tell, but just to give us a little bit of an idea. So, Huel, nearly 400 customers there, fantastic. I know we've got 200 and something, 250, something like that. Mark, 80 customers, brilliant. Mac over 200, fantastic, fantastic. So that's great. So a lot of people think, a Joe over 100, yeah, Tasha 150, brilliant. So that, that's fantastic, guys. Yeah, I know uh, Mr. Trowell, he's one of the, our top retailers in the, in the business. I know Dave does a lot of retail. That's fantastic. 1,200 customers. That's an excellent one. Fantastic, Graham. No, that's good. We all start in exactly that position, Graham. We all start off with zero. Sometimes, if you're lucky, your mum might say she'll order something from you, so you might get one customer on your first day. But no, we all start off from there. And what I'm going to show you now is basically how you get from where you are now to someone like Dave, where he's got over 1,200 customers that he services every month. So I'm going to go through this in two different parts, but the principles are the same. So the first part is on the catalog side of the business. When you first start off as in Graham's position, um, the first month you have zero customers. But each week, if you deliver catalogs to every house, all the houses near where you live, and let's say you deliver 200 catalogs, that's a reasonable number. If you can do more than that, I recommend you do, but you should certainly be living, delivering at least 200 catalogs a week. So every week you're delivering 200 catalogs and you will get orders from the people that you deliver the catalog to. So you know, depending on you know, where you live and so on, it will vary. But let's suppose, just to make the figures easy, you get 20 orders from 200 catalogs. So obviously, if you're doing that, that's in your first week. If you do that in your second week, your third week, and the fourth week, by the end of the first period, the first month effectively, you've got 80 customers. Now, each week, you're then, you come back to the beginning again, you're delivering your 200 catalogs still. But obviously, at this point, you're delivering 200 catalogs to 20 people who ordered from you last month plus 180 to other houses who haven't ordered from you yet. Or maybe they're new ones because you're just expanding your area a little bit. And out of those people, so these are people who are mostly, they've already had the catalogue from you once, you will get some more new customers. Not all of the 20 will order from you again straight away, but
but you will get 10 other people that will then order from you, or maybe five or maybe 15, but you, know, so you will get orders from people that didn't order the first time for all sorts of reasons. You know, it might just be that you know, the first time they popped it around, they were busy, they didn't go to them to have a look at it. Maybe they, they didn't see that you had the Christmas catalog in, and this time you put the Christmas catalog in, so they have a look. All sorts of reasons why they'll order from you the second time and they didn't order the first time. But obviously, if you carry on doing this, so in the next week, you're delivering to the next 20 customers and 180 other houses, the same the week after, the same the week after. So by the time you get to the end of month two, beginning of month three, you've now got 120 customers. Each week, delivering 30 of those catalogs to people who've ordered from you before, so 30 to customers, 170 to houses who haven't yet ordered from you. And again, maybe you pick up some more orders from those, and you always will, maybe 10, maybe 5, maybe 15, um, but just I'm just using these figures to, to, to keep it simple. So then month four, you've now got 160 customers. Again, each week you're now delivering to 40 of the people who've ordered from you in your previous four, three months, um, and 160 catalogs to other houses that haven't yet ordered from you. But you keep doing that. You don't cross them off your list just because they don't order from you at the beginning. And you can continue doing this for as long as you want. And basically what, what you do is, if there's somebody who tells you that they don't want a catalogue, well, thanks very much, I'm not interested, I won't buy, please don't deliver another one, then cross those houses off your list, obviously. You don't want to keep pestering people that don't want it. And the system that I recommend, but speak to your sponsor to get the specifics if, if they, might not, they might do something slightly different. After you've delivered to six times to each house, anybody who hasn't ordered from you during that six months, it's probably a good time to cross those off your list so that you can then move on to other areas to find other people who do want to order from you. And what I recommend you do is that you place an order every week. Now, sometimes this might mean you've got to, do a, you've got to pay a delivery charge, but you've only got a few orders that you want to put in. But your customers will really appreciate the prompt delivery. If you kind of wait, if you had a bit of a slow start and you wait for two or three weeks so you, before you put an order in and get free delivery, then your customers are going to think, oh, God, it's going to take three weeks every time I want to get any to order anything, and they'll stop ordering from you. So try to order every week so that your customers never have to wait very long because you're, you're trying to um, show your customers what a great service you're offering them. And then, depending really on how much you want to earn, you can just keep following that system month six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however long you want to. Let's suppose you get to the point where you've got 800 customers. That's 800 different houses who've ordered from you over the previous six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. What that means then is every week you're delivering 200 catalogs to customers. And the beauty of this is, firstly, you lose a lot fewer catalogs because you're only delivering to people who you know are going to order from you and put the catalogs out regularly. But also the average order per catalog that you're putting out increases from you know, a pound per catalog at the beginning um, to five pounds, six pounds, seven pounds. You know, at Christmas time, you'll often get 10 pounds per catalog. You could put 200 catalogs out and get 1,500, uh, 2,000 pounds worth of orders from that one drop. So um, the beauty of building this customer base, as we call it, call it is that it just that you get paid a lot more for the same amount of effort that you're putting in. And as I said there, this is what we call your customer base. You get a lot fewer bad pickups because you're only delivering to regular customers and your income is a lot more reliable from them. So that's kind of building up your customer base. Now the question you, you often hear if you're recruiting other people is, why would anybody buy from a catalog? Why, why do people buy from catalogs these days? Um, so I've got a quick question for you all. Before you joined this business, had you heard of Clean Easy? Just a quick yes or no, if anyone's willing to share that with me. Natasha, you had, yeah? I know I had. My wife got a catalogue for, for years before. Yeah, well, we did, and my wife used to order occasionally. Um, so I'd certainly heard of it. Yeah, lots and lots and lots of people have. Good. So some people don't. Mark, yep, yeah, Mark hasn't heard of it before. Um, but what you will find is, because Clean Easy have been around for 90, ooh, 93 years now, they're a well-known British brand. 
So initially, when you deliver an, a catalog to a customer who doesn't know you at all, you know, unless you're a next door neighbor or something, they will buy from the catalog anyway, simply because it's a known and trusted brand. They recognize the name, they recognize the brand, and so they, they, they're happy to buy from it. Well, as I said there, it was established 90, in 1923, so it's that 93 years ago now. But what happens is, as you deliver your orders to your customers, and you call them up and just sort of say, oh, just hi, Mr. Smith, it's Chris from Clean Easy. I just want to pop your order around, if that's okay. Your customers get to know you and like you and trust you. So it's really important that you are reliable. If you, go, if you say you'll go around on a Thursday to deliver your order, then make sure you make the best effort you can to do that. Make sure you're polite if you haven't got the right change or whatever. That's okay, no problem. I've got plenty of change here. Be friendly, be helpful. Sometimes you'll get customers that say, oh, you couldn't just drop a this letter in the post box for me, could you? And of course, you know, it might just be two minutes out of your way, but you know, it could help somebody who struggles to get out to the post box. So try and be helpful, and that will really build up a, a big uh, trust with your customers. And, and what happens then is that things change a little bit because your customers stop buying from Clean Easy, and they start buying from you. And you can reinforce this because that's what you want. You want a base of loyal customers that buy from you. And the reason that's important to you is that if somebody else, another clean easy distributor joins in your area in the future, then you want your customers to continue to order from you. They don't have to. They can choose to order from whoever they want. But as long as you've been polite and friendly and helpful and cheerful and so on, then they're going to want to continue ordering from you because they know you and they like you and they trust you. Now, you can reinforce all of that with a little bit of what we call customer bonding. Right, quick quiz, everybody. What's everybody's favorite word? This is kind of one of those things where there isn't a right answer, but what would you say your favorite word is? Any thoughts? Me? Yep, yeah, it's a good one, Matt. Any other thoughts? Anyone else got any ideas? Friendly, cheerful, hi. Yep, good one, Kev. Yep, hello, nice, friendly, cheerful, hello. Um, but what I suggest to you is that most people's favorite word is their name. If, they hear, if I hear somebody say, oh, hi, Chris, I kind of look round and I'm kind of cheerful already before I even see who it is. So your, your, your name is very important to you. So when your customers write down their name on their order form, and they might write Mrs. Johnson or Sue Johnson, if they give you their first name, then what they're doing is they're effectively giving you permission to use it. If they didn't want you to use it, they would just put Mrs. Johnson or whatever. So the next time you're going around, obviously when you're delivering an order to a customer, you can ring the customer up and excuse me. Ring your customer up and just say, oh, hello, Sue, it's Chris from Clean Easy. I've, I've got your order here. Is it convenient to pop it round? So you're getting to use their name, and people appreciate that, that you've remembered their name. But also, if you write that in your round book, your, your notebook, as you're kind of building up your rounds with your catalogs, when you go back a month later to deliver catalog back to that same customer, as you're walking towards that house, you know, check your notes, because obviously you want to check which ones you're delivering to and which ones you're not. But where it says Sue Johnson, you think, oh, yeah, I do remember Sue now, That's three, you know, three or four weeks earlier. Then as you're approaching the house, just you, you know the name, Sue might be in the front garden doing a bit of gardening or washing the windows or cleaning the car or anything, really. So just a quick wave. Oh, hello, Sue. It's Chris. How are you? Just popping your catalogue in, whatever it might be. Um, and that, because you're using their name regularly, Firstly, you do, after a while, you don't have to check your notes because you get to know her, so you know it's Sue, and she really appreciates the fact that you've taken the trouble to remember her name. So I use it every time, and what you will find is that, depending on obviously the size of the town where you're delivering, but you will often see your customers out and about. And so I, I live in a small market town. It's, you know, I pretty much every day I go into town for a coffee or something like that, I'll see a customer. So I always sort of say, oh, hello, Sue, hi, Mr. Johnson, or whatever it might be. Now, initially, sometimes, you know, if you don't know them all that well, you can kind of see they're looking at you thinking, I recognize that 
chap, but I just don't know where I know him from. Because obviously they know you from their doorstep when you're delivering an order, but now they've seen you in town, they just can't link the two. So I usually just sort of say, it's Chris from Seen Easy. And suddenly they say, oh yeah, hi Chris, how are you? So again, because you've taken the trouble to wave and say hello, you're building that, that trust and that rapport with them. You will often find things out about customers because sometimes if you ring them up to say, can I deliver an order? They might say, oh, I've just got to nip into hospital. My son's been taken ill. So then the next time when you do eventually uh, deliver the goods to them, ask them, oh gosh, how's your son? He was in hospital a couple of days ago. And you get to know things about the family, about the dog, about the husband and so on. So just kind of try and store that in your mind. You know, if you're not really, you haven't got a fantastic memory, write it on your little notebook, you know, so dog is Bertie, husband is Pete, children Sue and Gertrude, whatever. Um, and the next time you're going around, you can say, oh, how was Sue? She was really poorly last month. You know, she had to go into hospital. And they just really appreciate the fact that you've taken the trouble to ask them about something that was clearly important to them. The other thing to do is to look out for special occasions. So if I, if I go up to somebody's house and I can see lots of cards in the window, I always say, oh, is this somebody's birthday? Now, oh, occasionally it might be a uh, kind of uh, sympathy or whatever if a loved one lost or whatever, but most of the time it's a birthday or an anniversary or something like that. Um, and that's great. You can just sort of wish somebody a happy birthday. Um, another great time to do it, and this is absolutely perfect for this time of the year, make sure you give all of your customers Christmas cards. That's really, really important. Now, what we do is we always handwrite them. So, you know, you get a Christmas card, I just go through my list. Now, if Dave, I don't know if Dave and, and Lynn do this, they've got 1,200 customers, so they probably have to start in January ready for the next year. But we just write out um, to Mrs. Johnson, Merry Christmas from Chris and Sarah, and then I put in brackets, clean, easy. Um, and all I do is I put the cards through during the last four weeks before Christmas, so from about the middle of um, November through till about the middle of December. Um, so that they all get a, a card um, and what you'll find is you will get loads and loads of extra orders more than you would normally get because they really appreciate you taking the trouble to give them a card. And what I do is I just pop it through at the same time as the catalogue. Um, I, I don't put it inside the plastic bag in the catalogue because if they're, if they're busy and they're thinking oh, I won't get a chance to have a look they might put it straight out without even realising they've got a card. So I'll put it through at the same time but separate from the, from the, uh, the plastic bag, the catalogue. And you don't just have to limit yourself to Christmas. You can do that at Easter. And a few years ago, three years ago now, it was the company's 90th anniversary. And my wife, Sarah, made a load of these little biscuits. You can see them there. And we just sort of gave every, every one of our customers a little 90th biscuit with a little note saying, um, just, uh, uh, I don't know what, what the wording was now, but, you know, um, mem remembering our, the company's 90th, or celebrating the company's 90th, 90th anniversary. Um, and we had one customer, a lovely little old lady, who said, oh, thanks ever so much for my little birthday present. How did you know I was 90? And it turned out, turns out that she was born at the same time as the company's um, anniversary. So that was a good laugh. And, that, and that's, you know, that customer obviously remembers that really, really well. So that's the kind of the catalog side of it. So I hope that that kind of comes across. What you're trying to do is obviously at the beginning, it's a numbers game, getting as many catalogs out as you can. But really beyond that, it's building a relationship with your customers so that they get to know you and like you and trust you. That, that phrase is really, really important. Now, in Facebook, it's obviously a little bit different, but the principles are the same. So when you first start off on Facebook, obviously, again, right at the beginning, month one, you've got zero customers. But every week, you can invite friends to join your group. You can run a little competition. And maybe if you do that, run a competition, ask your friends to invite their friends then you might have, let's say, I don't know, a thousand members in your group. And out of those a thousand people, maybe 10 people will order from you. So that's good. You know, keep doing that each week, adding more friends, asking your friends to ask their friends. And you can repeat this over and over again. So by the end of the first month, maybe you've got 40 different people who've ordered from you. And again, each week, the next, the next, during the next month, you can ask those friends, those people who are now in your group, if they could invite some of their friends. You can run another competition. There are people who've got huge groups because basically what they do is they run a competition, they run it for a week. At the end of the week, they just start the next competition. 
massive groups with thousands, you know, hundreds, literally over a hundred thousand people in a group. So it's certainly possible to build a massive group. So, you know, but by doing this each week, you can build that up to 2,000, maybe again. Out of those 2,000, you'll get another 10 different people that will order from you. Um, again, month three, do exactly the same. Keep going, keep building it, keep building it. Don't stop. Don't sort of think, all right, well, I'm getting a few orders now, so I don't need to keep inviting other people to join. Keep going on. In the same way that you would keep delivering your catalogs to build your customer base, Keep building your Facebook group. And then the customer bonding on Facebook is a little bit different because obviously, although hopefully you'll get to see most of your customers face to face when they come and collect or you deliver to them, um, a, a lot of the time you, you don't get that kind of rapport that you might do just by asking somebody for a catalog back or knocking on the door. So, what's really important is that you build that rapport by replying to their comments, any likes that they put on on, uh, on your pictures, your groups, especially if you're doing little interactive posts. Like, you know, my wife Sarah every day puts a little note up sort of saying, you know, have a happy Thursday, everybody, have a lovely Friday, um, yay, it's the weekend, things like that. And lots of her regular customers always say, oh, yay, hi, Sarah, hope you're well, I uh, hope we have a lovely day. And you just get a little bit of chat within your group from your regular customer there. And as I was saying there, engage them. In, you put, don't just put things for sale in your group. It's really important to give them the opportunity just to engage with your group as well. So little puzzles, little competitions, there's loads and loads of examples of that. Speak to your sponsor if you want some detailed ones. We've got a little uh, group that we use for our team where if anybody comes across a really good interactive post, we stick it in there and then everybody can just share it. And, and once you've been chatting with somebody and you kind of feel like you've got a little bit of rapport, send them a friend request. That's a great way to, to show them that, you know, you, you really appreciate them engaging with you and that you want to be friends. Because having um, them as friend requests, they then get to know you and like you and trust you even more because they'll see all the personal stuff you put on your timeline as well about family and things like that. So obviously you're sharing personal stuff with them. Um, and also, and this is really an important part of the business, they will see your success. If you're posting, wow, just really enjoying this business, oh my God, I can't wait, we've got a fantastic bonus coming up this month, just hit my new bonus level, whatever it might be, they're going to see that and they're going to be thinking, oh, blimey, I didn't realize you could earn good money from this stuff. So, And then they, you never know when they might become one of your team members. And again, if you've got a friend request with somebody, I'm sorry, if they're friends with you then, you can see what they're posting. So, you know, they might have something interesting in their profile picture, a dog or a, you know, a, a daughter or, you know, whatever it might be, and their cover photos and their pictures that they take. And then again, you can reach out to them by, you know, she, commenting on, oh my God, your dog is so cute. How, what, what's he called or what's she called? Or, oh my God, I love that dress your daughter is in. She looks so pretty. Whatever it might be, you just kind of, obviously if they're posting stuff up about themselves and their family and their life, it's important to them. So just kind of recognizing that and reaching out to them is a great way of building rapport with your Facebook customers in a slightly different way to how you might do that um, with your catalog customers. But at the end of all of that, the catalog side and the Facebook side, what you end up with is a, a big list of customers who know you and like you and trust you. And what that means is you get lots of regular orders. And that's what you want. Trying to find a new customer is quite hard work. So once you've found an existing customer, it's really important to build that rapport with them. Okay, guys, I hope that's helped. Pretty much covered what I was going to go through this evening. What I talked about is what is a customer base. So hopefully you, you know now what I mean if, I'm, if you hear somebody talking about a customer base. And um, a bit about why customers order from you at the beginning and how you can encourage them to become loyal to you an order from you over and over again by taking an interest in them and what's important to them. And the result of all of that is a base of loyal customers who order from you regularly. Okay, guys, I'm just going to turn off the recording. Bear with me just a moment while I do that.